Welcome back to the shop. I figured you guys might want to check this thing out. Uh, since I'm not much of a carpenter, I built that table right there. So it's just two by fours and MDF. Um, didn't really go by any sort of design. I just kind of winged it. Uh, it's actually a very sturdy table. I've jumped on it. My entire body weight's a couple hundred pounds hitting it. It's no problems. It's on casters. That means I get to wheel it around. And, um, a lot of people, they have this kind of bench grinder. And, uh, well, this is an older Craftsman. And it's actually a very nice unit. Uh, it's all cast iron. But people usually bolt these to their bench and I really don't want to bolt it to the, my bench because for one this thing makes a big mess. Uh, even though it has these shrouds, it has ports in the back where I guess you're supposed to put um, a vacuum or whatever. And uh, this thing is just putting out garbage throughout. I used it to sharpen up some high speed steel recently and this is what I get. So I don't want to breathe that crap in. I was wearing a mask when I sharpened the high speed steel. I also don't want this thing to pollute the air around me. I work in a basement shop so again I don't want these nastiness. So what I did was I mounted it to this uh, cart and this allows me to move it out of the way because this is one of those tools that when I need it I really need it but most of the time I don't need it so it can be wheeled away and put in the corner and I can do whatever. This is actually my other grinder and ignore the wheel on that one I will not be using this as a grinder anymore it, uh, it's gonna be a wire brush as well as a belt sander on that side so this is a 1725 rpm motor and uh, it's a Delco motor it's an old machine but it's it's a low speed grinder perfect the problem is there's no switch or anything like that and even the cord I had to put one in because the old cord was well shot I was afraid to plug it in so now I have to come up with a, some sort of dust collection arrangement for all four of these heads as well as um, you know uh, do some electrical work so this thing can be wheeled away I can plug it in one spot and then turn on the dust collection and turn on one of the grinders and turn on the port that I needed to work in and pull that dust and nastiness right out of it. So with that said, I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about this. Alright, so I took the shielding off, or the separator I should say, and uh, I designed and printed these pieces. It's basically a funnel and it funnels into a um, circle it fits in here quite snugly actually I have to remove the shield on the side and actually bolt it in but it actually can get in there it's almost too tight just got what I want it to be and that adapts the square output to a round tubing which is actually one inch PVC piping now mind you these are still hot and I need to clean up some of the edges and I may, may even machine this a little bit or machine the actual PVC pipe most likely I do have a lathe after all but I have two of these so now I can insert these in here and uh, adapt it to this grinder next up is uh, mounting, mounting these in the grinder I'm gluing a couple of nipples to these and then putting the elbows in and drilling holes in the table to go down. I'll show you in a few. So after some turning on the lathe, these are the nipples. 
they fit in here. I'm not going to push this in here because I haven't put the PVC glue in there yet, but get how it works. So I should be able to push this all the way through and actually made all of this together. This I haven't decided if I'm going to use PVC cement or ABS goop on this. We'll see. I'm going to test it out on a piece of uh, PVC how the a ABS goop sticks. Then we'll tell. Well, nothing's been glued yet, but uh, this is the exits from the grinder into the dust collection system that's going to be built underneath this. I had to remove the other grinder that was here and obviously the divider barrier um, so it'll give me some room to work on this and uh, now I'm gonna actually mark and cut the holes for the divider barrier mount that in and then possibly glue the top part of the elbows before I build a manifold underneath so I wanted to show the blast gates that I uh, designed on my 3D printer and um, there will eventually be four of these but for now there will only be two of them and this is one of them that I'm going to be assembling in front of you. The main thing about these is it accommodates a one inch PVC pipe in there. And I found out that ABS and a, a PVC cement uh, work very well together, so I can actually glue this in there. Try to show so choose, but it's actually a pretty decent fit. It's actually a really nice fit. So that's straight out of the printer. I just deburred them a little bit. That's the gate. These are the parts in there. So. What I want to do is I'm going to pick one side to actually chamfer up and this is my hand chamfering tool. It makes quick work in chamfering these so I can actually countersink the screws in there. And yeah I could mount this on the drill but most of my drills will probably eat this up for breakfast and then I end up destroying it it's soft plastic so I'm gonna hand chamfer these or I should say hand countersink them I could have designed the countersink in there but it wasn't really worth my effort when I can just come in with this and do it literally in 30 seconds. So, the way this thing works is I'm using one inch drywall screws and they surprisingly work pretty darn well with uh, ABS 3D printed plastic parts. And uh, I've made these interference fit. That's the first spacer goes in. There's a second spacer. There's the next one, next piece, and again this is basically right off the 3D printer, I didn't go crazy with drilling or anything like that, it's, uh, I took careful measurements and my printer is fairly accurate, moment of truth will the blast gate fit. Yeah, what do you know? It fits, so I should be able to push it through 
and shut off the gate not bad so the way these things will be mounted is a nut in there threaded rod there will be another nut on the other side of it to kind of lock it in and then when you push the knob well hopefully I'll build a limit in there but when you push the knob it pushes it enough to shut it off and then pulls it enough to go right through so these are my homemade blast gates one inch well here are the blast gates they're in place now this is where the manifold is gonna go right between these and it's gonna come up to a main collector and uh, but for the moment I'm gonna call this video a wrap and uh, I want to show you what I've come up with as far as opening and closing these blast gates um, obviously you need to actuate them because the vacuum that I'm planning on using for this is a very light duty vacuum so there's not a lot of suction there so one channel at a time is what I'm gonna use so I'm gonna need these blast gates with that said I want to show you the actuation so let me show you guys how this is going to work. Right now the blast gate is closed and all I have to do is pull it out to the limit and it will open the blast gate. Push it back in and it's closed. The threaded rod here rides on uh, 3D printed bushings that I made. Uh, I'm using double jam nuts to limit the throw as well as the knob itself is also limiting the throw the knob has also been 3d printed and uh, it actually it's turning out pretty decent I'll show you what it looks like on the other side so that's what it looks like it has to still work its way through and the actual blast gate is, needs to be fastened down a bit more uh, but that will happen when I uh, uh, glue in the rest of the manifold in there but not a bad system at least I think so alrighty um, alright guys I will see you next time if you haven't already done so please subscribe comment give me suggestions like on like alrighty see you next time bye